Welcome to Daily Game, and we're going to start off with Sonic Frontiers, which is getting some new content via a roadmap Sega released. Jukebox, photo mode, challenges, new playable characters and story, and apparently it'll all be free. Now, I give Sonic a lot of flack, but honestly, this does deserve a round of applause. So many teams try to sell content before the game is even dropped. Looking at you, Callisto Protocol, but to give all this content away for free, that's pretty dope. During an interview with Flex Friedman, Todd Howard briefly spoke about the upcoming Indiana Jones title, saying, quote, I would just say it's a mashup. It is unique. It is one thing intentionally, so it does a lot of different things. Now, it's been a while since we saw this game first announced in January 2021. Feels like it was like seven years ago. So hopefully we'll see it again soon. He also dropped a few new hints about Starfield calling it a deeply human world. Among other details, like you won't be stranded out in space with no fuel because it will be a fun killer, maybe for hardcore survival mode in the future. He also mentioned that not putting it on PlayStation 5 helps the team stay focused and that it wasn't a huge change for them since they've always primarily been Xbox slash PC development first. And I never really thought about it that way, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, there's a lot more uh for this story so go check out the interview if you want to hear it all gamesindustry.biz ran a story where they spoke to several past and present from software employees to discuss excessive overtime and inadequate pay one source said quote there has been much overtime work for me while another said during critical periods of game releases i often had to work early mornings and overtime for two to three months Another source says, quote, it's not as if crunch happens on a daily basis. It's more common during the ROM check for the publisher or two to three months before release. In terms of pay, employees can expect, according to a data on Career Connection, an average yearly salary of 3.41 million yen, about 25K, significantly less than the 5.2 million or $38,000 employees at the comparably sized Atlas take home. As of May 2022, from software has 349 employees. Now that blows my mind amidst this entire article that From Software only has 349 employees. That's insane for the quality that that team puts out. Now, overall, I think Crunch will always forever be this black eye on our industry, and it sucks that it feels so inescapable for so many. And what makes it all so much worse is the poor pay for such an exhausting career. Uh, you know, hopefully Elden Ring success will at least. Uh, bring some pay raises to these men and women that work so hard to deliver, I mean, arguably the game of the year. According to Insider Gaming, Monster Hunter Rise is coming to Xbox and PlayStation early next year with the Sunbreak expansion coming in July. It will be a 4K 60 port with 3D audio coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X next year, January 20th, with Xbox owners getting the cherry on top. They're also reporting it's coming to Game Pass day one. Pretty sure this sounds like a Game Awards announcement. With Game Awards in a little over a week, that would be the perfect place to debut this. So that's probably where we'll see it. And lastly, Midnight Suns is making a late break for Game of the Year. It's currently holding an 83 Metacritic store. The reviews all around were pretty solid. IGN says, quote, its innovative turn-based hero combat system takes a bit of time to get going, but once it does, it makes excellent use of card game mechanics to keep battles fresh, evolving, and unpredictable over the course of an epic length campaign. And that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Like it if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, and check out the Camp Koji podcast every Monday. Peace.